Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Blue Friday morning. We've got another training camp to evaluate, and this one's going to be over pretty quickly because, well, frankly, the stuff that you're hearing from training camp, it's, you know, it's kind of diminishing returns, right? In terms of interest as a fan, and in terms of motivation for the beat reporters to actually report it, right? Because we, we've kind of heard all this stuff already. The players who have been playing really well so far, for the most part, are continuing to play well. And the players who are injured continue to be injured. So we're definitely hitting the right point for us to be on the verge of our first game, first preseason game, but still first game. Um, we, we just... There's just not a whole heck of a lot going on in terms of interesting stuff to talk about at camp right now that I'm hearing. Um, the only thing that I heard of note, and this is of minor note, is Cody Thompson. Cody Thompson is the definition of a receiver who I have completely put out of my mind in recent weeks. I knew he was on the roster, but beyond that, I didn't think about him at all because it seemed to me a given that he was not going to make the roster this year and probably not even make the practice squad this year because we were bringing in all these new receivers. Apparently, he's looking good. So if you were looking for this year's Jazz Ferguson, a receiver or, well, not just receiver, a player in general who has very little shot of making the team, <clears throat> but then kills it in the preseason because they actually get decent playing time because they're at the back of the roster. Cody Thompson might be a good bet. Um, but, and, and, you know, for fun, we can talk about who are going to be our Jazz Fergusons this year in the preseason. Who are going to be the guys who kill it in the preseason and still don't make the team? I remember uh, years ago, the Seahawks had a player for a couple of preseasons. I think his name was Nick Reed. He was a defensive end. Every preseason he was here, he would kill it, and then he would never make the team because it, it wasn't real. It was, uh, you know, illusion caused by playing third-string offensive linemen. But anyway, um, so Cody Thompson feels like a really good pick to go Jazz Ferguson this year. I would also probably go with Tyler Mabry and Ben Burkirvin. Those I mean, Ben Burkirvin's going to make the roster, but he's not going to play, so... Those would be my guys. So that's really all I can say for training camp. The guys who are injured are still injured. So let's talk about a roster move that we made and get out of here. Make it quick today. Why not? All right. So <clears throat> yesterday afternoon, the Seahawks re-signed uh, Darice Roberson. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it should because we signed him uh, I think a few weeks ago, and then released him a few days ago, and now he's back. So we're playing musical chairs with the back end of the 90-man roster. To make room for Darius Roberson, we cut Brian Mills, who we signed right after the draft, I believe. Or Yeah, I think it was the day after the draft was over. Or, um, he was one of those UDFAs, and this is actually worth talking about for a second here. Darius Roberson, you know, whatever, right? That That's not a big deal. He's never going to make this team in a million years. Honestly, I don't even know why we're re-signing him like we have a problem at receiver. We don't, even with Eskridge being hurt. There are so many receivers on this team who are just waiting their, their turn to get some reps. But Brian Mills was a guy we gave a pretty decent signing bonus for a UDFA. He got twenty grand. I think the default is like five grand. So we coveted him, and apparently we're not that impressed with what we've seen because we've just cut him and said bye-bye 20K. And 20K obviously doesn't matter to this team's salary cap because it's so insignificant compared to the 100 mil plus. But it was a big deal when we signed him because the cap on signing bonuses for UDFAs for NFL teams is actually very low. So whatever we saw out of Brian Mills, and I want to say when we picked him up, that was one of the UDFAs who I thought we might have something here. Didn't pan out because he's gone and he's gone to make room for a player who I don't think we need. I don't really understand this. Like, okay, obviously in the preseason, especially in this first game, you might get to the third stringers, like the third set of receivers, but behind the big three, like let, let's discount Eskridge for a second because he's hurt. You've got John Ursua, you've got Penny Hart, you've got Cody Thompson, you've got Aaron Fuller, you've got Connor Weddington if he's still 
technically a receiver. You've got uh, Kay Johnson. There are so many receivers on this team who need reps to fight for a roster spot. I don't know why you'd bring back Darius, who has basically no chance. It, it's Darius might do the Jazz Ferguson this preseason, honestly, if he actually plays. He might be the guy who has a good preseason and still doesn't make the team because, of course, he doesn't make the team because he's Darius Roberson. So... I don't know about that, but Brian Mills getting cut is a surprise to me. I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, that's really all that's going on right now. I think we're all ready for some game action. I think we're all ready for some actual Seahawks football that we can watch on our TVs with announcers in high definition. So um, I will be doing a uh, pregame video later today for that game, so keep an eye out for that. I know that's going to be a lot more interesting than anything I can say about training camp at this point. But um, basically what's going to happen tomorrow is I'm going to watch the game, but my postgame video and postgame stream will happen the next morning because I do not think it would be a good idea to post a video it would end up being at about like, you know, 9.30 to 10. And then I'd be doing a stream starting at like 11, which is 2 a.m. for East Coast. I'm not going to do that. If the game really does end that late and I wouldn't be able to start streaming until like 11, I'm just going to hold off and post it the next morning. So just to let you guys know what the plan is, that's basically what we're looking at. Um... Yeah, I'm ready for some actual Seahawks football, or semi-actual Seahawks football. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about the preseason game in the later video, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut it here. Peace out, go Hawks. Training camp, it's always interesting, but I've had enough. I'm ready to start talking about actual games. See y'all later.